Hello, I'm Marie Davis Markham, and I'm the co-founder of Wildwood Running. I'm thrilled to be here with you ladies today. Um, thanks for coming together with Period and Parity to talk training and competing with the period. As menstruators and athletes, this is something we've had to learn to, to navigate successfully. And I'm excited for all of us to talk today and hear a little bit about each of your stories. Um, so let's start by getting to know all of you first. Um, Carly, can you share a little bit about who you are and your sport? Yeah, hey, I'm Carly. I am in my fourth year as a professional basketball player. Right now I'm in Salamanca, Spain competing. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about period with you guys. Hello everyone, my name is Nikki Nieves. I'm a Paralympic athlete, a Paralympian, and I'm currently in Orlando, Florida, waiting for COVID to stop being annoying so I can return to training. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kara Winger. I am a javelin thrower, three-time Olympian so far, hopefully number four in Tokyo um, this summer, those postponed Olympic Games. Uh, and I hold the American record as well, but played a bunch of different sports growing up, kind of in that, you know, adolescent era that we'll be discussing um, and had to navigate my period as a multi-sport athlete in a lot of different situations. So, so, so happy to be here. Thanks, ladies. So I'd like to start with you as a younger athlete, um, when you were in middle school and high school and, and getting started in sports. I wanna know a little bit, or can you tell us a little bit, what was your experience like competing with your period? When I first got my period, I, was, I had been playing basketball for quite a few years, but I thought it was the absolute end of the world. I thought, even outside of basketball, I thought my life was over. I don't know how people can worry about this every single month coming in, but especially like, training with basketball I was super nervous I obviously didn't feel great didn't feel myself but that was my first experience with it when I was younger like I really thought the world was over um for me it was a little weird because I got mine like in the middle of a school day I remember and I remember like my mom took me home and let me shower and brought me back to school and I was just like I have to go to practice like I can't practice with this like what am I supposed to do I don't feel clean like what happens if there's an accident so it was just a learning experience having to like go through everything and learn how to like navigate and prepare yourself and like what clothing to wear when it all started. So I started my period during swimming season and I, I love swimming. It was like one of my first loves in sport, but I also like didn't grow up talking about it at all. And so to be in a situation where I had to use a tampon because I had no other option and I'd never really had those conversations before was a little bit of a wild ride. Kind of like Carly said, like I felt like my life was over. This is all of a sudden something I hadn't really thought that much about and then had to confront just absolutely head on to keep going to practice every day. Um, and it was also same as Nikki, like beginning of a school year, my freshman year of high school. So you're already in this like social situation that's really difficult. And then confronted with something you hadn't really expected to hurdle, even though I should have, um, and that's on my mom. But um, yeah, just a, a big transition in a very short period of time. Did you guys find that you had mentors, friends, teammates to talk to, people to look up to, maybe some of the older girls on the team to help you navigate this time with getting your period and being an athlete as well? You know, I don't know about you guys, but I only talked to my mom about it. I don't even know if I told my sisters. I was like super nervous about it, like super embarrassed almost that I started my period. Um, but yeah, I didn't talk to my teammates when I was younger. Same, I only talked to my mom about it um forever and I think maybe senior years when I finally spoke to a friend about it and that's because I didn't have any like pads left and I didn't know how to use tampons and like my really good friend at the time I like remember asking her and I was like do you have a pad and she's like oh no I use tampons and I was like <gasps> like something brand new and I remember uh it was like football season um and I was like cheering and I remember like being in the bathroom and she's like okay now open both legs and like trying to like help me use one and like little tears coming down. I'm like, no, it's okay. I got it. I got it. But being absolutely terrified. I have a very distinct memory of something like that, like a sleepover where it was the first time that my friends were like openly discussing the use of tampons and how to use them and all that stuff. And it was so shocking to me because 
same. Like I didn't have those conversations with my friends until like the bandaid was totally ripped off at this one sleepover. But before that, you know, to give my mom more credit than I just gave her, like she was the only one that I talked to about it. And it was very straightforward. Like once we finally had the conversation, uh, it was just something that, you know, she knew was going to happen and we would get there when we got there. Uh, and then she was definitely my resource, but yeah, not a whole lot of like open conversation until I think finally everybody boiled over at this one sleepover and we all had this conversation. Similar to you guys, I remember that I had a senior who I just turned to, not my mom, but a senior that was able to help me navigate that. And now as a coach myself and a co-owner of a company who is encouraging coaches to have these conversations, we're doing research and we see girls want this information. They want to know more about training on their period, competing on their period. Do you feel like that's something that would have been helpful for you as a young athlete? Definitely. Just because community is so important. And even though we might play different sports, we all share, you know, menstruating together. And like, I feel as if somebody would have gave me their tips and tricks of how like they got through a game or what happens when you don't have any tampons or pads or what happens when you do have an accident it would have made life that much more easier instead of panicking and being in frantic mode because now a you're afraid to talk to somebody else and b it's your very first time yeah I think if I had well the confidence or just more people to talk to about it I wouldn't have felt like the world was ending because I knew it wasn't just me getting a period but like I felt like it you know like it's only happening to me <laughs> Yeah. And as a, a young woman, like that is your worldview. Like you, you, it's scary to talk to about anything that's controversial or weird or like embarrassing. And uh, to, to have people that are there for you would have, it would have been really great. Um, I think that, yeah, even to this day, like, I know this sounds really silly, um, but it's still a thing that's like, do, do you have, do you have a tampon? Is it okay? is it okay if I borrow one? And I've like gone to the store for friends before, but it's still just like a thing that we never talk about again. And uh, breaking that stigma down is the reason that it's great to be here. So do you remember a moment or a time sometime in your athletic career where you felt like you had a professional, a coach, someone in your life who is kind of able to give you more information on the importance of a period um, that would help you as an athlete and as a woman? I didn't see research um, really on this. Like I'd had a couple of friends that would post, you know, maybe they are athletes, but they're also in the medical field. So they'd post on like, because of where I'm at in my menstrual cycle, like this is what my training looks like today and stuff like that. And I just instantly was like, wow, like that's really interesting. Let me learn about that as a 30 plus year old fellow professional female athlete. Like, I can't believe this is the first time I've run into that information. Mm -hmm. And as someone that's been injured multiple times, I'm currently recovering from my second ACL surgery in the same knee. Uh, I, I look at what my cycle was like when those injuries occurred and am like kind of devastated to realize that maybe I could have done something differently to avoid injury. Um, so I ate up like those articles about the US women's national soccer team when they talked about the World Cup um, a couple years ago and all of the tracking that they did to make sure their hydration was on point and uh, their team dynamic was such that they could succeed and map, map their workouts out in a way that would help them be successful based on what their bodies were doing that is not under their control, but that they control how to deal with. I didn't learn about the importance of having your period and period health until I got into professional sports. And then, you know, like you were saying, like a 30 plus for me, I was maybe 23, 24. And now it's coming around more often that it's kind of mind blowing because I wish I would have known these things when I was younger. Because of course, when I was younger and there was a period of time where like I, my period just stopped and I didn't think of it as a bad thing. I thought of it as a wonderful thing because now I don't have to worry about it. And I'm not worried about accidents or having to carry extra stuff with me. It's just, it's gone. So woohoo, like take advantage of that time, but it's not healthy. Um, and I definitely wish that it wasn't, like there wasn't a stigma around it because I feel like the more you make it something that, you know, everybody's going through this, I'm comfortable to talk about it, the more that these athletes will like really 
I don't know, get a grip on their health. And it's more than what you're just putting into your body, but also what your body is going through. Kind of on the opposite end of that, Nikki, like I had extremely heavy periods, like even from when I first started, like really just clotting and absolutely disgusting. It made it even more difficult to talk about because it was like, this is not only painful, but it's also like really gross. And more often than not, I will have an accident like during a period. And as a young girl, like that was really, really hard. So just between every single class, like going to the bathroom to make sure that nothing was terribly wrong. Um, so when you talk about like period hygiene and, and health and stuff, like for me, that meant having access to information that could help me manage those symptoms, like, and, and make it better for myself in terms of like just consistency and like reliability of what my body was doing so that I could be a more effective athlete. So I never lost it, but like, I had to deal with this super, super heavy flow on the other end and then figure out how to like make it more manageable for myself on my own kind of. Mm -hmm. sure and I like that because high school I missed it and then I got older and it completely switched to what you're describing now like terrible and I'm just like I don't understand so (laughs) I agree with you so we also know that four and five students in the United States have missed either class time or know someone who has missed class time because they did not have access um, to period products did access to period products impact your ability to attend practice or games back in middle school or high school or college? I can't, I think in high school, I was really lucky that my mom, if I ever didn't have access to something, she would really like come bring it to me right away. Um, So I can't imagine what it would be like to not have access to a pad or a tampon when you had a practice or a game in college. Our trainer always had tampons and pads, like every game or practice, if you needed something and you didn't have it, she had it. So. Yeah, like without access to that, those resources, um, I mean, I think I would have to miss a practice or a game. I can't imagine. I can try, but I, I know what it was like to have the products and still have accidents happen. So to not have the products and have absolutely no real remedy for the situation would be absolutely really devastating. I remember times in my own career where I might have as a distance runner been out somewhere and been like, oh no, I gotta get home and not being able to finish a workout because we're out on the trails or something. And I'm like, sorry, coach, like I gotta go kind of thing. And so not necessarily, it is access in my sport because I'm away from where I'm at. Um, But I also learned to carry tampons that were tiny that could fit my little running shorts, you know? So thinking about those things is, is important for all menstruators. What has it been like to train and compete while on your period? Have you noticed a difference? Is there more information for you? How are things different as a professional athlete? Now that I'm a professional athlete, there's definitely more information. Um, And our staff is, they're like more cognizant of like periods and our bodies are doing different things like Kara had mentioned. Um, Even our sports nutritionist, like she's really awesome about it and always just having us focus on like, you know, how's your iron if you have a really heavy period, you know, um, how's your lifting uh, during your period. So that's really nice. And being able to just speak freely about it. Not to say that I couldn't really in college, but I think this is like the first time that I've actually felt comfortable and okay to talk about it with all of staff. So male and female um, and feel supported um, 100%. Yeah, to, as a professional athlete, I I met my husband in 2006, like a couple years before graduating from college, and I told this story in some of our meetings, like leading up to this panel, that like he, as a male, like someone I had never spoken to about these periods before, I had super super heavy ones, and one of the sweetest things he's ever said to me is like, how can I help you feel better? Like, what can we do about this? And as an individual athlete, like I'm very used to finding my own resources and trying to figure it out on my own. So to have that like very personal, like helpful person in my life to like walk with me through it was very cool. Uh, And really it became my responsibility again, right? But to know that I had that support was really, really neat from the love of my life. And then as a professional athlete and working through all of that stuff. And again, like finding the resources, like the right type of birth control for me to make my body feel the best that it can throughout every single month has just really been awesome um, for training. 
training because I, I did have some uh, iron deficiency because of those super heavy periods like early in my career and working through again which kind of birth control was best for me has just made it way way easier to rely on my body in every single training session um, and pay a little more attention to hydration like when I'm on my period but just over so much time and being in um, Olympic and Paralympic training centers actually, and having really good access to those doctors has been super helpful. But I know that that's not everyone's experience either. So combination of having really reliable resources and also you know, walking a path in life that means I'm pretty individual um, and able to find my own way uh, has really served me well in both my menstruation journey and athletics. I think for me as a professional athlete, I've started to view my body in a different way than before. Like it's the health of my body is what allows me to perform. So I think just training and dealing with my periods as a professional compared to before, um, I don't really like get mad at myself if I don't feel good or like if I can't go as hard in a training session, you know, like it's part of who I am and like the health of my body. So I think I like give myself like breaks in that sense like it's not you're not supposed to hate yourself for having a period so as a professional I think it's just part of being a menstruator and in training. So you all talked about someone or yourself that kind of has brought in your view and your understanding and the way you are able to navigate your body do you feel like that's because you're older because you're a professional or do you think things are shifting where these conversations are starting to happen more often for me it's definitely being a professional um and just having like you said that one or two people in life that you know make me feel more confident in talking about any issue that i'm having um physical or mental or emotional uh rather than like the the wider conversation and that's not to say it's not happening it's just that it's not necessarily a conversation that i've been a part of that has directly affected me until right now which is cool um but for me it's just a like a a growing up as a 34 year old like i've had a lot of time to get used to like being more confident talking about it i i don't know the answer to that because i'm not involved with like high school or younger sports right now so or whether it's in sports or out, but I would hope it's shifting. I know when I first came over to Italy to play basketball, um, I had like six or seven juniors on my team that were like 14, 15 years old and they were speaking Italian, but they had absolutely no problem talking about periods. So I don't know if it's a cultural thing or what, but I would hope that it's shifting because it is, it, it shouldn't be such a taboo topic when you're younger. Um, I definitely think that it's because I'm an adult now. Like I feel like an adult. Um, and because I'm a professional athlete, that's why, but I definitely think it's shifting too, because um, for the last four years, I've been a high school coach, and they just let it out, like, <laughs> coach, my cramps are really, really bad, and yada, and they'll just go off, now, of course, I'm, I feel comfortable with them, and I don't make it any weirder, because I want them to be able to express themselves, but, like, just hearing them talk, and, like, to me, or, like, to their, like, other athletes I'm just like wow like you guys are really comfortable and I wasn't like that when I was in high school obviously conversations like this are great and important because they're making periods not such a taboo topic but what other things do you think within your own sport or within your own group of professionals that would help people to continue these conversations or even bringing it to our younger younger generations I think overall, I mean, avoidance of injury is like a really personal thing for me just because of how my my journey has gone. But that is something it's just like an ACL, <laughs> like, honestly, like it's just a part of your body that if you don't understand it, like it's going to be scary or you're not going to like prepare in the right way for it. So that's like for me, just really personally in this stage of my life if I understood how the way my body was operating might impact like the way that I could train or should train or could like protect my joints, um, if it had an impact because I'm already injury prone, that would have been really helpful information to, you know, maybe be better at sport or just more comfortable or effective in training um, growing up. So that's the, the value that I see in, you know, my, my selfish current perspective of being injured. I kind of wish that it would be included um, when there's like when you're younger and your coach or you know your trainer is talking about how important everything is so how important sleep is how important your eating is 
because I feel like when you're younger, of course, you're still going to get embarrassed because, you know, your hormones are going all crazy and your body's still changing. But I feel like I would have felt better about it had someone just laid it out there as something that was normal and regular and put as much emphasis on, on my period as they did my nutrition and my hydration and my training. Then it just would have been something that like was just automatic. So if I'm clocking everything else, I would have clocked my period as well. Yeah, I was just thinking, I don't know if it was the fact that I had all male coaches growing up and male trainers where if that would have been different. Yeah, if they were female, if maybe that would have been talked about more, like you said, Nikki, like as as important as nutrition, because um, it took me until I was a professional to have male trainers actually ask me about my period and when they're giving, you know, like full physicals and asking how you are. So maybe that was an effect. Um, we see male coaches and, and sometimes they feel nervous that if they're a 50, 60 year old coach and it's a younger adolescent girl or a girl who's, you know, in her teens and not an adult yet, like, is this a, is it, am I crossing the line? Is this a conversation I shouldn't be having? Where as you guys were talking, it's about health. It's about how our bodies work and the importance of it. So I think it is something that hopefully we'll continue to see some shift in that regard. Um, so we all think of periods as that one terrible week a month. And the truth is there's the lead up, there's the ovulation. It's really a never ending cycle. Can you talk about some of the things you've noticed regarding your training and competing in your sport um, that are common every single month? For me, I am just looking at the date and hoping that I don't get my period on like a big game. Like always what I'm looking at because one I like if I get really bad cramps that week it's different for me each time but that's really tough to deal with but two no one wants to be on their period during a big game like it's just annoying to deal with. Carly my high school basketball uniforms were white <laughs> with that that fabric that like you can't get anything out of like the really like kind of shiny pilly sort of fabric so terrifying every single time. Yeah I think I've been on my period at like more more important competitions than not <laughs> and there's like i i don't really have control over that right like i i've tried to kind of like switch my birth control to maybe plan out like when it's going to happen more but i know that that can be difficult too and maybe not necessarily the safest thing i also don't really want to go back to the doctor to have just that conversation to how do I like transition my period to a different time of the month and it's just a you know you in the Olympic and Paralympic space like you're working with tiny percentages to win and if there's like that tiny little reminder in the back of my head that like I is this going to affect my performance? Like, will I be injured because I'm on my period? Like that's that's something that I've struggled with, not in a really severe way, but again, like those small percentages really matter. And so if it's any kind of conscious thought that I don't fully understand, like that can be hard. And I know that that's a universal experience, just one annoying thing instead of being able to focus completely on your sport. I get really tired and really emotional right before it's about to like happen. Um, and I've gotten so good at like, so I, I track it, but like I, I've gotten really good at like, okay, my period must be coming because I am super emotional. There's no need why I had to cry that I couldn't lift 25 pounds in the dumbbell today. Like that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and just really super tired, but even competing too, like having to like, pack extra you know undies and uh pack extra products and for me like I play sitting volleyball so we're like sliding on the floor and like worrying about not leaving a trail and you know did I prep myself well enough that like if we do go to five games like I'm going to be okay all five games instead of like having to ask the ref to go to the bathroom and then I don't want my coach to get upset that I'm asking the ref to go to the bathroom but I have to go to the bathroom because it's my period so it's just, oh, it's really annoying. And then when you're, I'm emotional leading up to it. So now I'm already like, oh my God, like it's just upset about it. So I don't know, it's, a lot goes into it. I just, oh, and then like cramping while you're competing. Like sometimes I have really, really bad cramps enough to where they've put me on medication for it. So it's like praying that this month my cramps will be bad, but it's the type of bad that while I'm playing, I don't, I'm not really feeling it until I'm done. 
or is it going to be the type of bad that like I can't even jog because I'm like I'm dying so in in a in an event in track and field like it's an individual event field events you're out on the field in the middle of the track to go to the bathroom in big competitions you have to be escorted by a field judge like, to the bathroom so if you're like hey i need to i need to go to the bathroom i only have like three minutes before like the next my next attempt like it's in the middle of a competition i gotta like go to my bag get a product then go to the bathroom and this like typically older white man is like escorting me to the restroom and it's just like it's it's really really terrible um and then yeah in terms of impacting uh performance and training when I first started trying birth controls to deal with my super heavy uh menstruation I gained a lot of weight and this was like kind of beginning of college. And all of a sudden I was like, I cannot prioritize this because I must prioritize like my training and with the way my body works, the way I know how it works. So I'd rather deal with like this terrible flow than risking how I know that I train well and perform well. I was a track athlete myself. And I remember being when in college and when I ran post collegiately, we would race in briefs, which are like bikini bottoms. And I remember being on the starting line and sometimes worrying more about my period than my race plan. And what was what was gonna show or what was gonna be seen while I was trying to run four laps around the track or whatever. So um, Carly, do you have any feelings on that too in terms of uniforms and how you've had to, some obstacles you've had to work on in your sport? Yeah, for sure. Like Kara said, like in basketball uniforms, I mean, you wear white if you're home team and whatever for visitor. There have been so many stories. I know probably every single one of my teammates on every team that I've played with has had an accident during a game wearing a white uniform. Like it's, it, it's inevitable that it happens, but we always had like a personal checker on the team. Like once I got to high school, high school, I would only like tell, you know, my secret friend, like, hey, will you check for me just in case? But in, um, in college, like everyone, and in professional, we all know when we're on our period and we're like, hey, we're wearing white today. Just keep an eye out for me. And you know what? That feels good because then you're not on your own, right? Because just like you said, worrying about it on your own, you can't even see down there yourself. So it's it's nice to be able to talk about it with teammates, but it for sure is a thing with white uniforms. So you guys have all talked a lot about, um, you know, bloating and being tired and hormonal and heavy flow. And we know that in the past little bit, there's been more information out there regarding how to navigate your period and things that can be done to help with cramps and all of those things, whether it's food or ad adjusting your training. What would you, what piece of information would you want? Like what part of your period would you want help feeling better with, if that makes sense? Like for me, it was, I was so crampy, like to the point that I was like, go to practice. I felt horrible. I was cranky. And then I get home and I just lay in the fetal position for like hours. So I wish that I had some, some more advice on how I could mitigate those cramps. I would agree with you. For me, that's been a big issue for, for my periods is they're so inconsistent too, with if the cramps are going to be bad or not. And so some more information on maybe like how I can make it more consistent or how I can catch it early enough to not like have those debilitating cramps where I just go home and lay in the fetal position. Like if I had a game at that time or practice, I wouldn't be able to do it. So, yeah. I agree. I think that's like the biggest part because bloating, okay, I can get over it. Um, tiredness, I can get over it. But I think cramps is absolutely the worst. And it's something that I still look like for information for. So what am I eating? Um, should I stay away from dairy? Should I try working out? And sometimes, like I mentioned before, I, I can't even work out. Like that doesn't even help me. Um, so definitely <laughs> pain relief. I feel really lucky that I, I have pretty asymptomatic periods, even when they were super heavy. Like I, I had some cramping, especially when it was really heavy, but uh, I think yeah, like product management would have been really helpful with a really heavy flow. Like there was kind of nothing I could do if they were really clotty, terrible periods because you can't use enough tampons or a big enough tampon to really stem that flow. 
even when you also use pads. So uh, just product management, I guess. And in, in terms of like what even better products were, I know there's so much more variety now than when I was first dealing with those issues, which is really awesome. Uh, and then I am someone who unfortunately suffered a lot from adult acne and uh, from a young age that was really dependent on my period as well. So I had like period acne every single month um, after high school, which was really weird. My skin was great through high school and then post high school and until now it's been quite a journey. So information on that, like the, the hormonal stuff that affects like things other than just your uterus and all of those associated um, systems. Cause it was a real, a real struggle for me through college and until like two years ago when I finally figured out the derma dermatological fixes that helped me surrounding all of my hormones. I would just reiterate having support, like whether it's one person or as many as you need. Um, another really uh, adorable story about my husband is that he washed sheets for me once when we were staying at one of his friend's houses and I had an accident and he was like, I got it. Like took the, just the cutest thing ever. So like stuff like that from sometimes sources that you don't expect. Like I would have never thought when I met him that that would be a role that he would like play for me, but it just like makes it so much more obvious to me that those people are incredibly important. Um, can you think back to your younger self and what advice would you give yourself? For me, I, like I said before, I think I would tell myself that it is not the end of the world and that this happens to everyone. <laughs> well, not everyone, but everyone that menstruates. And I would just say, like, appreciate your body for what it is. I think it took me to be, till I was a professional, to not hate my body when I was on my period. Um, so I would tell myself that to be more appreciative of. It's okay to ask for help. You ask for help with everything else. You're a female. It's going to happen. It's okay. I, one of the things that I wish I would have learned earlier and that I feel like I'm still kind of stepping into is like trusting my gut and being okay, like standing up for my friends or, and like as a, as a teenager, like that's something that you might be there for somebody after they get bullied. Like this was kind of always my thing. Like I'm, I'm introverted and quiet enough that like, I'm going to be your friend, but I'm not brave enough or I wasn't brave enough to like step in and stop whatever situation was going on. And with menstruation, like that's kind of a, that's the same theme. Like it can be unfortunately a bullying situation and being able to like be more open about it would have helped other girls and my friends like also be open about it and just be more supportive like we said all three of us said we were kind of all in it on our own and just being a little more vulnerable in social situations in general might have aided like vulnerability in uh this situation that we all go through yeah well thank you ladies this was such a great conversation um hearing all of your stories and how they can sometimes be very similar and very different hopefully will impact a lot of wonderful people out there so thank you